Good day and welcome to this program, the Iglesia Ni Cristo and the Bible. A program brought to you by the Iglesia Ni Cristo or the Church of Christ. Friends, welcome to this half-hour program devoted to studying what the Bible teaches. In today's episode, we will be focusing on why we all need to seek out the genuine church that belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ and what this has to do with partaking of the grace of salvation. So we hope that you'll continue to join us. Let us find out in the Bible, Brother Edel, what is the condition of uh, humankind in the sight of the Lord God that makes it absolutely necessary for all of us to seek salvation? Let's read the answer to that from the writings of the Apostle Paul. Here in the book of Romans, chapter 3, the verses are 19 as well as 23. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Friends, let's remember that alone of all human beings, only the Lord Jesus Christ did not commit sin. So no matter how kindly or considerate or caring or charitable a person is, that's not enough to exclude him from the rest of the world, which, based upon the Apostle Paul's statement, stands guilty before our Lord God. Are you also ready to accept the truth that we are all guilty of sin in the sight of the Lord God. But, Brother Edwin, does the Apostle Paul tell us what the unfortunate condition or what the wages of sin is? Yes, he does. Again, let's continue reading from the book of Romans. This time in chapter 6, the verse is 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Friends, did you notice? Since all of us have committed sin, we are all destined to taste death. And we all know that death does come to visit. No matter whether we are rich or poor, whether we have finished school or not, whether one is powerful, famous, death still comes. In other words, death respects no one, Brother Edwell. That's right. Friends, wouldn't you agree that among the many problems that we face in life, this is one problem that truly deserves to be addressed without any delay. But Brother Edul, what if someone makes light of this and say that, well, I don't care? No, let us uh, share to our friends and viewers, is the first death, the cessation of breath or the physical death, the only death mentioned in the Holy Scriptures? Let's read of another one. It's written here in the book of Revelation, dear friends, chapter 20, the verse is 14. This is what the Bible says. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Friends, the Bible speaks of a second death, and it's going to take place in the lake of fire. So one should think twice before uh, adopting a reckless attitude towards sin and death. Yes. Now, can we tell our friends exactly what kind of punishment that awaits those who will suffer the second death in the lake of fire? Again, let's turn to the book of Revelation. We read to you verse 14 a while back. Let's now read Revelation 20:10. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Friends, eternal torment or never-ending punishment awaits those who will be thrown into the lake of fire. A person's freedom to end the suffering that he suffers there and the pain dies in that place, which is why it's such a sad, it's such a big mistake to say that it doesn't matter whether one commits a sin for as long as one is enjoying oneself. Wouldn't you agree that the few moments of pleasure that sin might give a person will never be war eternal punishment or eternal damnation on the day of judgment? Friends, when we return, we will find out through the Holy Scriptures what the Bible further says to those who have already committed sin and now stand guilty in the sight of the Lord God. So please stay with us.
Welcome back to our discussion. Friends, we were asking a while back, what does the Bible say to those who have committed sin in the sight of the Lord God and now stand guilty in the sight of the Father? And after all, we were asking this, Brother Edwin, because all of us have committed sin in the sight of the Lord God. Well, let's read the answer to that from the book of Psalms, dear friends. This time, Psalms chapter 49, the verse is, or the verses rather, are 7 down to 9. A person can never redeem himself. He cannot pay God the price for his life, because the payment for a human life is too great. What he could pay would never be enough to keep him from the grave, to let him live forever. The Bible's teaching is very clear. A person by himself could never come up with enough to pay the Lord God so as to redeem his own life. This means that none of us can save himself from the law of the Lord God that requires death as the payment or as the wages of the sins that we have committed. But should we think, Brother Edwell, that since we can't redeem ourselves, that we can't save ourselves from paying the wages of sin, then all is lost, that everything is hopeless? What does the Bible say regarding that? Let's consult the Apostle Paul once again. Dear friends, from the book of Galatians this time, here in chapter 3, the verse is 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. Friends, we can never emphasize enough the role that the Lord Jesus Christ plays in the grace of salvation or in the redemption of all sinners. What's impossible for us is not so for Him. We cannot save ourselves from the curse of the law, but the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, can. He can redeem us from the curse of having to suffer that second death in the lake of fire, which we read about a while back, which is, of course, the result of the sins that we have committed. That is true, Brother Edel. Friends, don't you agree that we all need the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ? Don't we all need to partake of that redemption that the Lord Jesus Christ effected? But how could the Lord Jesus Christ accomplish what the rest of us by ourselves, of course, could not accomplish? Again, let's return to the book of Romans. Friends, Romans, here in chapter 3, the verses are 23 down to 25. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by His blood through faith to demonstrate His righteousness, because in His forbearance God had passed over the sins that were previously committed. Friends, it's through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, that blood that He shed on the cross, that He is able to grant the grace of redemption, the grace of salvation to man. Now, aside from this shedding of blood, there is no other way for sinners to be redeemed of the sin or to be redeemed from the law of the Lord God concerning sinners. But why are we absolutely certain, Brother Edel, that there is no other way other than through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ a person could be redeemed, could be forgiven of his sins. Why are we so certain in saying that? Well, that's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Friends, let's read from the book of Hebrews this time. Here in chapter 9, the verse is 22. Indeed, according to the law, almost everything is purified by blood, and sins are forgiven only if blood is poured out. It's important that all sinners be included among those who have benefited from the shed blood of the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, unless we are included among those who have benefited from His blood shed on the cross, friends, the sad truth remains. Our sins remain unforgiven. But our friends are surely asking, Brother Edul, are we sure that when the Bible mentions the forgiveness of sins, that grace of redemption, that a person could receive through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, that this really means that that person, that redeemed person, will no longer suffer second death in the lake of fire on the day of judgment? Let's consult the apostles. Friends, let's read from the book of Romans. Here in chapter 5, the verses are 8 to 9. This is the testimony of the apostle Paul. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners... Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. If we are included among those justified by the blood of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, well, 
the Apostle Paul assures all of us, we shall be saved from the wrath of the Lord God. And so this is the solution to man's problem. The problem of having to pay for our own sin by suffering the second death or eternal punishment in the lake of fire. Friends, are you one of those who believe that when the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross, that He already redeemed the whole world? Are you also one of those who believe that it's enough to just accept the Lord Jesus Christ as both Lord and personal Savior? That it's enough that we have faith in Him in order to partake of that grace of salvation? Now let us find out in the Bible who alone have been redeemed or purchased with the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We won't answer with our own opinion. Instead, friends, let's read what is written in the Bible. Here in the book of Acts 20:28 20, of the Lamsa translation, this is what we can read. Take heed therefore to yourselves and to all the flock, over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers to feed the church of Christ which he has purchased with his blood. Friends, don't get us wrong. We're not saying you don't need faith. Faith truly is important, the true faith, of course. Having Jesus Christ as our Lord, as our Savior, that's also important. But we also need to make sure that we are included among those who have been redeemed, those purchased by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And based on the words of the Lord God spoken to us or testified to us by the Apostle Paul, that body is the true church of Christ. And that is why we said at the beginning of our program, we all need to seek out the genuine church that belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ and that has to do with partaking of the grace of salvation. Now at this point, we would also like to clarify, it's not the doctrine of this church, the Iglesia Ni Cristo or Church of Christ, that the church is the Savior. No, the Lord Jesus Christ is the Savior who will be utilized by the Father on the day of judgment. However, let's always remember that the genuine church of Christ, that which was purchased, redeemed with the blood of the Lord Jesus, is that which is going to be saved by the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is precisely the reason we never tire of inviting our friends and viewers to seek out that true church of which the Lord Jesus Christ is the head. And friends, please include this church, the Iglesia Ni Cristo or Church of Christ, among the many churches among the many religions that you will be examining. Well, after all, the Bible proves to us that we have all committed sin in the sight of the Lord God and need to be saved from the second death in the lake of fire. But I'm sure you are asking and you are curious to find out, what is the firm hope of a member of the true church or a true servant of the Lord God when he faces death? The firm hope of a true Christian is the same as the firm hope of the early servants of the Lord God. And what is that? Well, let's read about it in the book of Psalms, dear friends. Here in chapter 49, the verse is 15. But God will rescue me. He will save me from the power of death. Friends, the power of death holds no terrors for the true servant of the Lord God. And we all know in the Christian era, that that servant of the Lord God is the true member of the true church headed by the Lord Jesus Christ, the true church of Christ. And the reason for that is because the Almighty Father rescues His servants from death itself. That is true, Brother Edel. Friends, don't we want this blessing from our Almighty God to face death unafraid because we too have the assurance that the Lord God will rescue us from death itself? So let us find out in the Bible, whom will the Almighty Father whom will the true Lord God use as His instrument in effecting the resurrection of His servants? Let's read the answer to that here in the book of 1 Thessalonians. Here in chapter 4, the verses are 16 down to 17. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Friends, the Apostle Paul is describing what will happen during the first resurrection. The Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, will be sent by the Father and all who died in Him. In the Lord Jesus Christ will partake of the first resurrection. 
they will also be joined by all those who are in Christ, whom he will find still alive on his return. Together, the Bible tells us, they will meet the Lord Jesus Christ in the air, and the promise to them is that they will always be with the Lord from then on. And this is, of course, what all of us need, Brother Edwell. Right. The assurance that we will no longer have to suffer from the eternal damnation on the day of uh, judgment. The assurance, dear friends, that we will meet the Lord Jesus Christ upon His return, to be taken by Him to His heavenly abode, there to dwell with Him and with the Father, of course, forever and ever. But the question is, who are those who are in Christ who will be resurrected first? That's a very good question, and I'm sure many of our friends are asking the same question. Mm -hmm. Friends, let's read the answer here in the book of Romans, chapter 12. The verses are 4 down to 5. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we being many are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. Did you notice? To be in the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to be in His one body. And another thing, the Apostle Paul points out that what are many are the members, not the body. The body is only one. Since there is only one head, the Lord Jesus Christ. That is true, Brother Edwell. Friends, are you already certain that you are in the one body of which the Lord Jesus Christ is the head? When we come back, we will find out through the Holy Scriptures. We will find out more about the one body headed by the Lord Jesus Christ. So please, stay with us. Thank you for joining us in this episode of the Iglesia de Cristo and the Bible. We were asking earlier, which is this one body? Which is this one body of which the Lord Jesus Christ is the head? The answer is found in the book of Colossians. Friends, let me read to you chapter 1. The verse is 18. And he is the head of the body, the church. Did you notice? Man cannot ignore the invitation to enter into the true church of Christ. And why is that? It's because the true church is needed in order for a man to be in the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Now, you read earlier that those who are in the Lord Jesus Christ, meaning those who are in the true church of which the Lord Jesus Christ is the head, will join the Lord always on the day when the first resurrection takes place. Now, you might be wondering, dear friends, why is it that if one partakes of that first resurrection, then one will no longer suffer the second death or the eternal punishment in the lake of fire? Well, again, let's return to what the Bible says. Here in the book of Revelation, in chapter 20, the verse is 6. This is what we can read. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such, the second death has no par. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with Him a thousand years. If one partakes of the first resurrection, then one will no longer suffer the second death in the lake of fire. This punishment no longer has any power over the members of the true Christian church. Isn't this truly a great blessing from our Almighty Father? Isn't this something we truly need, especially since we all stand guilty of sin? before the sight of our Almighty Father? Now, what did the Lord Jesus Christ, you might ask, what did the Lord Jesus Christ promise to His true church, which proves that we are not only giving our own opinion when we emphasize the importance, the indispensability of the true church introduced by the Bible? Let's read His words. Here in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, the verse is 18, the words of the Savior. And so I tell you, Peter, you are a rock, and on this rock foundation, I will build my church, and not even death will ever be able to overcome it. Friends, this is what the Bible teaches. 
So we hope you'll continue in your search for that genuine church of Christ, the church that upholds the truth, the genuine teachings written in the Bible, and is assured of the grace of salvation. We hope that you will not allow the demands of work or study or family or your friends to prevent you from joining the true church redeemed with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But of course, friends, the decision is now up to you. Friends, thank you so much for joining us once again in this episode of the Iglesia Ni Cristo and the Bible. You're welcome to visit our houses of worship and to talk to our ministers as well. Friends, we look forward to having you join us in our worship services as well as in our evangelical missions. Please find out for yourself whether the doctrines or the teachings of this church truly do conform to what is recorded in the Holy Scriptures. Please send us your questions or your comments but for now, please join us in a short prayer. Our most merciful and loving Father in heaven, we ask you once again to please accept our thanksgiving, Father. Yes, Father. Because you have allowed us to study your words written in the Holy Scriptures. Amen. We also beg you, Father, help our friends and our viewers. Please, Father. Since you know that there are times that there are people who find it hard to admit that they have committed sins before yes, your holy Father. sight. We beg of you, please, give us humility of spirit, yes, so Father. that we may all admit that we need the grace of salvation. Yes, Father. And upon admitting that we need that grace, Father, grant us also the faith and the understanding that we require, yes, Father. so that we may also accept our need for the true church of Christ. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, you sit there beside our Father in heaven, we look forward to the day when you finally are sent forth by our Father. Yes, Lord. We beg of you, Lord Jesus, please, on that day, may you find also our friends and our viewers please, Lord. worthy of the grace of salvation that you bring with you. Please, Lord. Because they too are now found inside your true church. Amen. Father, once again, we come before you. We beg that you bless the entirety of the church of Christ. Yes, Father. But please, more than us, bless the church administration. Please, Father. We ask all these blessings, Father, in the name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.